My name is Tracy Chow, and I am a fellow in cohort two of the Edmund Hillary Fellowship. My mountain is Old Gold Mountain, which is the Chinese name for San Francisco, and my valley is the Valley of Silicon. <laughs> this is me as a child. My parents both worked as software engineers, and so I grew up surrounded by computers. I went on to study computer science at Stanford University, and then to work at startups like Facebook, which was then about 500 people, and we really just thought we were helping to connect the world. Um, then Quora, one of Josh Hanna's investments, I joined as a fifth person there. And Pinterest, which I joined when it was about 10 people and left when it was about 1,000. Although it seems like my path to being a software engineer was as smooth and easy as anyone could have it, it actually wasn't. Uh, it always felt like something was off. I assumed that perhaps something was wrong with me and I wasn't cut out for tech. My first big epiphany was a very belated realization that my discomfort and frustrations might be something to do with the environment around me and not me. When I looked at the engineering teams around me, they were mostly men. And even though there were other Asians, most of the people in charge were white men. My second big epiphany was a realization of the great irony and hypocrisy that for all of Silicon Valley's obsession with data, there was no data at all on diversity. And so in October of 2013, I posed a question to Silicon Valley, which was, where are the numbers? Unexpectedly, I sparked a wave of diversity data disclosures from companies small and large, including Facebook, Google, Apple. Here is some of that data uh, for women in tech. As you can see the percentage of women in tech was not great. Um, this is in 2016, a slight increase. 2017, another slight increase. Um, but as you can see from these year-over-year -year trends, the progress has been very slow. In 2016, I got together with a group of seven other women in tech, and we formed a nonprofit called Project Include to focus on solutions for diversity and inclusion in tech startups. We did this because we were tired of hearing about the problem and not enough about how to fix it. Our belief is that real, long-lasting solutions need to be underpinned by a few core values. One, being inclusive, two, comprehensive, and three, accountable. On that first point, true inclusivity. We need diversity and inclusion beyond gender and race and class and these other superficial cuts of diversity. For example, starting with women first efforts also usually means stopping at women and they're usually the wealthy white women. Second, comprehensive solutions. Just like three step get rich quick schemes don't work, three step get diverse quick schemes also don't work. True solutions need to be comprehensive and holistic. And third, on metrics and accountability, we need to set goals and measure ourselves against them to know if we are truly making progress. Tactically, Project Include has collated resources and recommendations for startups ranging from topics like defining and implementing culture to manager training and resolving conflict. And we also work with startups in cohorts to implement these recommendations. We've been doing this work for a few years now. But last year was a particularly interesting one in this space because of the Me Too movement and all the disclosures of gross and minor harassment, misconduct, and discrimination. Relevant to this audience, this is also where my diversity and inclusion work starts to intersect with EHF. Last fall, I met Andy, who you heard from yesterday, through a Facebook group, and we started talking about what could be done in the wake of the Me Too movement to capture that moment and make something of it. Not long after, EHF shared the list of Cohort 2 fellows, and we found each other on that list. Knowing that we were now fellow fellows was a catalyst for us to renew our collaboration. And just a month ago, we launched a project called Moving Forward, which calls on venture capital firms to publish their inclusion anti-harassment policies and points of contact for founders to reach out to, if necessary. We have had nearly 100 firms pledge or uh, participate or pledge to participate, including some of the biggest and most prestigious firms in Silicon Valley and beyond. But 
Fun fact, Andy and I only met in person for the first time a week ago on the airport shuttle coming in from Wellington. Now we are tent mates and running buddies and we've also gone out to make friends with the cows in Aroha Valley. Part of what excites me so much about the Edmund Hillary Fellowship and New Frontiers is the space for serendipitous meetings and collaborations amongst cohorts of people here not just for laundry lists of professional accomplishments, but for character and integrity and heart. Kia ora.